Today's topic is Vadiyarthaniyas. Uh, we will begin with a, a normal sinus rhythm and then we will move into a Pradiyarthaniyas. Uh, normal sinus rhythm. What is normal sinus rhythm? Once we learn about a normal sinus rhythm, then it's kind of easy for us to understand the bradycardia or bradyarrhythmias. So we'll start with the normal sinus rhythm. How would you recognize a normal sinus rhythm from an abnormal rhythm? Okay, there are some uh, easy ways to recognize a normal sinus rhythm, uh, which I'm going to explain you. Okay, first thing, I'm just going to draw a picture first, uh, and then from there, I'll explain you how to, you know, recognize a normal sinus rhythm. Okay, just look on this uh, ECG rhythm. Okay, I try my best to draw a picture here. Okay, so this is the normal ECG rhythm. Looks like a normal ECG rhythm. So what are the things that you can see on this uh, normal ECG rhythm? You can see a P wave in here. What is P wave? P wave is the atrial depolarization. Okay, a normal ECG rhythm, you can definitely see a P wave. And what else you can see on the normal ECG rhythm? You can see a QRS complex. What is QRS complex? It is the ventricular depolarization. Okay. And what is T wave? Next thing, a, Q, a QRS complex followed by a T wave. T wave is the ventricular repolarization. So you can see with one beat, you can see these three things. What are them? Uh, P wave, QRS complex and T wave. Okay. The next beat, you can see the same thing, right? P wave, QRS complex and T wave. You can say that nothing is missing on this ECG rhythm. But still you, you don't know if it's a regular or irregular rhythm. Or if it's a normal sinus rhythm or is a irregular rhythm. Okay. So for you know recognizing a normal ECG rhythm. These are some areas that you need to uh, figure out. Okay. First one is the make sure is this rhythm. Is this ECG rhythm is regular or irregular. Okay. So the regularity. Okay. How would you know that this rhythm is regular or irregular? There is an easy way that you can, you know, see, say that, okay, this is a regular rhythm. This RR interval, okay? So, if this RR interval is same with the each beat, okay? So, the RR interval is same with each beat, then you can say that a regular ECG rhythm. Normally, like this RR, this consecutive two R waves, okay within uh, normally like you know if if it's a normal ecg rhythm then this two consecutive r waves should be within a uh, three to five big boxes okay rr interval should be within three to five big boxes okay if it's three to five big boxes then you can say that okay this rr interval is normal and uh, normal but another thing this rr interval the same with the, the following RR interval. And then you can say that, okay, this is a regular rhythm. But if you noticed that uh, this RR interval is within four big box and this RR interval if, is within two big boxes, then you can definitely say that, okay, this is an irregular rhythm. This is not a regular rhythm. If it's less than, uh, if it's kind of four big boxes, I mean two consecutive RR interval, it should be same with the next two RR intervals too. That is something to look on to make sure whether it is a regular rhythm or irregular rhythm. And the next one, PR interval. How would you know that if this PR interval is normal or abnormal? Okay, what is PR interval? PR interval is something like, you know, it's the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. Beginning of the QRS complex. This distance is called a PR interval. Normal ECG rhythm. When you look at a normal ECG rhythm, normally one big box. You all know that an ECG stripper, if you get an ECG stripper, you can see that there has uh, you know, big boxes and in that big box, you can see small boxes too. Okay. So this PR interval, if it's within one big box, then you can say that the PR interval is normal. What is the normal PR interval? It's 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. That means it has to be within a one big box. If that's uh, matching then you can say that uh, this is a normal PR interval so the second criteria is me. Okay. the RR interval we already discussed uh, and the third thing the rate the rate normal heart rate is anywhere between 60 to 100 that is considered as normal heart rate but from looking on an ECG stripper how would you know that uh, this is a normal heart rate or abnormal heart rate how would you know that if it's less than 60 or greater than 60 and I'm teaching you a way okay for you know the heart rate there is a formula actually 
heart rate is equal to 1500 divided by number of small boxes number of small boxes within two consecutive r waves okay two consecutive r waves just think that if this uh, rr interval is within a uh, five big boxes okay how would you count the number of small boxes okay each one big box has one two three four five each one big box has uh, five small boxes if you look on an ecg rhythm you can say that uh, each one big box has five small boxes so in this rr interval okay or this rr interval is uh, within a five big box then how would you calculate the number of small boxes it is definitely it's an easy way right 5 into 5 is equal to 25 so how you calculate the heart rate of this patient heart rate is equal to 1500 divided by number of small boxes within this rr interval what is that 25 is equal to 60 beats okay so you, now you know that you have to calculate the heart rate of this patient get simple 1500 divided by number of small boxes within the consecutive uh, two r waves uh, that's how you can calculate the rate from this ecg strip so that's six, 60 beats per minute so then you can say that uh, the rate is okay uh, and uh, you can see p wave qrs complex t wave nothing is missing in here and i also added that the pr interval is the same Okay, and RR interval is, you know, it's within the three to five big boxes. So that's correct. So from almost everything is kind of within the normal range. So then you can say that uh, this is a normal sinus rhythm. Now, I hope you understand how to recognize a normal ECG rhythm from an abnormal one. Now we can look on the bradycardia. Okay, bradycardic rhythm. There are different types of bradycardia. Okay, these are bradycardic uh, rhythms. First one is sinus bradycardia. Second one is looking on the AV nodal blocks. Types of AV nodal blocks. First one is first degree AV block, second degree AV block, and third degree AV block. We will begin with the sinus bradycardia. Okay. Now that you can see, you know you can see two ECG rhythms on the board, right? What is the difference? The first one is a pretty much a normal ECG rhythm, right? So, in which you can see a P wave, QRS complex, T wave, P wave, QRS complex, T wave, P wave, QRS complex, T wave. Okay. So, there is nothing missing. No waves. None of the waves are missing on the rhythm. And, uh, and from the picture itself, you can say that the PR interval is within a one big box. Uh, PR interval is within a one box. PR interval is within a one big box. Or you can say that it's, it's anywhere between the, uh, you know, uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.20 seconds. And the next one that you need to look is RR interval. It looks like uh, within that uh, 3 to 5 uh, big boxes. So that you can say that the RR interval, the rhythm is kind of regular rhythm. This RR interval is same as this RR interval. So you can say that the rhythm is regular. The next thing is rate, heart rate. If it's uh, anywhere between 3 to 5 big boxes, then definitely you can say that the heart rate will be, you know, normal within 60 to 100 beats per minute. Okay, so that's a normal ECG rhythm. Look on this one. Okay, think about that. Okay, here you can see P wave, QRS complex, T wave. P wave, QRS complex, T wave. None of the waves are missing in here. However, what is the difference? The RR interval is kind of very prolonged in here. You can definitely say that it's not within the five big boxes. It is greater than that. Okay, definitely you can say that it's greater than five big boxes. Everything else, you can see the PR interval. PR interval is within the one big box. PR interval is okay. PR interval is okay. So, you can say the all the, in each beat, you can see everything like the P wave, QRS complex, T wave. So, that's correct. P wave, QRS complex, T wave. What is the only like abnormality that you can see on this rhythm? Prolonged RR interval. But the rhythm is regular. How would you say that the rhythm is regular or not? The RR interval with the each beat. Okay. This is same as this is. Okay. So if it's this is six, within six big boxes, you can say that this is six box two. So the RR interval is same with each beat. Hence you can say that this is a regular rhythm, but the rate is low in here. If it's a six big box, 
then how much would be, uh, what is the number of small big boxes in between this two consecutive r vowels 6 into 5 is equal to 30 so what would be the rate it is 1500 divided by 30 is equal to 50 beats per minute so this is bradycardia patient heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute so now you can say that uh, this patient is having a bradycardia but the rhythm is everything else is same like what else uh, it has atrial depolarization, ventricular depolarization, ventricular repolarization. Uh, you can see the, uh, you know, the RR interval is same as the next one. Uh, PR interval is the same. So the rhythm is regular. Um, PR interval is normal. QRS complex is normal. The only difference is rate. It is less than 60 beats per minute. Now we're thinking about the, you know, treatments. Not all bradycardic patients uh, require treatments though. As long as they are not symptomatic, they don't require any treatment. However, if they develop symptoms, what kind of symptoms you can see on these patients? Like if their heart rate is really low and it significantly drops their cardiac output, that's when these patients will become symptomatic, right? What kind of symptoms? If, if the heart rate is low, then definitely it's going to affect the uh, perfusion of the vital organs. For example, brain, kidneys and other vital, vital organs. So if the perfusion is compromised significantly to the vital organs, that's when the patient will become symptomatic. We can see their heart, um, their blood pressure can drop. You can see they become, you know, uh, lightheadedness or fainting. So if the patient is brought to the hospital with all the symptoms, that's when the patient requires treatment, right? What kind of treatments? Atropin is the pharmacological approach to the bradycardic patients. Atropin is helpful to increase the heart rate. So pharmacologically, uh, we can treat this condition with the atropin sulfate. If the symptoms are refractory, like uh, uh, it's keep on getting the symptoms or having the symptoms, they, well, even after the atropin sulfate, then the next treatment option is the pacemaker. I have a class uh, coming uh, with the pacemaker, which I will explain everything about the pacemakers. And uh, the next class, mainly we look on the heart blocks, I mean the AV nodal blocks. Thank you. If you like my class, please uh, share it and subscribe it. And also I am providing coaching for the NCLEX RN and other nursing exams. If you would like to join, please uh, reach me uh, to the uh, number uh, that you can see at the end of the uh, video. Thank you.